Hello and welcome. In this video I'll show you how to make nested scriptable objects. So for that we need two scripts. First we'll simply just make one called container. Let's just call it damage types. There we go. And the other one we'll just call damage types. Again, the names are irrelevant. It's just so that you will get a better idea of what we can use this for. Alright, so now we have the container and the demo type. So this is one is going to be the parent and this one is going to be the child. Or oh, children. Alright, now that the script finally open, we simply will remove this and remove mono behavior and put it out with the scriptable object. There we go, scriptable object. We'll also be needing the unity oh the uh, using unity editor. So we're going to go Unity Editor. And that we actually need to put inside a hashtag. So if Unity underscore Editor. And on the other side, we're going to go hashtag uh, int if. All right, so the reason for that is that we are going to have this specific ping, uh, this specific thing in the game, and anything that has with the Unity editor, editor, we need to tell it that it that should only be in the Unity editor, meaning when it builds the game, it will ignore this part. Of course, we will add other things down the line that we, it also will be ignoring. All right, so next up, we are going to make a serialized private list of damage types and we're gonna call it damage types and let's just instantiate it here so we have it all right and let's make a public so we can get it from outside as well the code all right so now we actually needs to do so we can make it oh We'll probably actually need to go back into oh is that the right one yes the damage type and actually make the damage type into a scriptable object or else this will probably not work so scriptable object here we are and this actually also needs to be inside the unity editor it also needs to have a unity editor so we're gonna go this and um, let's actually make it uh, no, yeah, it, it needs uh, a, a reference to uh, its container, so we're gonna go con. Can I can't spell for something right now? Let's see, container demo type. There we are. Uh, we're just gonna go. Damn it! Oh no, that was not what I wanted. Let's just go my container. There we go. I think that's fine. And let's make that also so we can get our hands that. And we do not want to sit. We don't want to accidentally change that in the code. And next up, let's just make some f some you know, some fields just to have something. Uh, let's have a name. So name. Oh, name. And let's just add a sprite. Oh, yep. Call that icon. Let's just go with that. And again, probably also one of those serialized fields. There we go. And again, we don't want be able to be able to change those from outside. So we're just going to remove that. Next up, I think we will probably make an instantiate. Yeah, so we're gonna make a public void called instantiate. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to copy paste it because instantiate, I don't know exactly how to spell it correctly. I think that is, that's close enough. And there we pretty much just want our container in it. There we go. And we're just gonna go, oh, no. So my container equals my container. There we go. So here we will instantiate it. And again, we actually 
only one that in uh, we actually only want that in the editor, we don't want that in the game. So we're actually going to edit inside here. Well, we don't really need this, but we might as well add it in. Alright, so next up we will add the possibility. No, I think this is good enough. Uh, let's jump over so we can actually make it. Uh, let me just look at my notes quickly. Here we go. Actually, we also want this here, so we're gonna go this, be gone, and let's just make some space, and we're just gonna call it, let's say, make new damage type. Let's just call it that, and we also want it to be able to find it outside in the inspector, so we're gonna use the content menu. And just call it uh, make new. Let's just call that. All right. So now we need to go damage type. Uh, let's just call it. Pop, pop, pop. Ah, can we call it damage type? Yes, we can. All right. So that's gonna be a scriptable object because now we need to actually make it. Scriptable object. Dot create instant. And of course, we need to tell it what type it is creating. Alright, so here we actually create the scriptable object. Now we uh, need to change something in it. So, the name of the new scriptable object. Uh, we're just going to call it uh, new damage type. So that is what it will be called outside uh, in the Unity Inspector. And we need to uh, we need to call the serialized field here and throw this inside it so it has a reference to its damage container and we need to add it to our list so we're gonna go dot add damage type all right so now we need to do a lot of unity stuff so we're gonna go asset uh, data dot add object to asset and here we are going to add the new damage type and call it this so this one here will be the child and this one here over here is the the parent and next up we need to save what we have done so save asset then we also need to go into the Unity editor and actually tell it that it has become dirty. And that is a really weird thing to say, but that is what Unity calls it. So first we're gonna go this. Just gonna duplicate this one here and go damn it type. Alright, so this one should make it. So let's save and jump back out I think this is the one I probably have too many unity things open at once oh yeah we forgot the one of the important things we actually forgot this up here else we can't really actually create one uh, what is it uh, it is create asset menu and then here we need to go isn't it something if you go let me just check if this works if you go create as menu and double tap Ah, oh, that didn't work. I was just hoping. Right, so we need to go file name. I'm just gonna call it... Or I'm just gonna be lazy and copy paste this down here. And that will be the name when we create it. Then we also need to find it in the menu. So we're gonna go menu. Dot... Or let's just go stats, I guess. And go damage container. I think that is fine. So let's go back into Unity. Now we should be able to right click and find it. So right click, stats, damage container. All right, so here we can see our beautiful list. There's nothing in it. So we can go up over here, click and click make new. And as you can now see, we now have made a new one down here. And uh, we could just keep making them. But uh, they're named the same thing right now, and we don't really want that. 
so we're gonna go in and re uh, make a function that they can rename themselves. So let's just do that. We will actually need this thing here again because it is uh, um, it is a script, and this one don't need to be public. This can be private. So we're just gonna go white and call it rename. And it's simply just going to be this dirt name equals underscore name. And we're gonna go asset database dirt save asset. And we also need to set it to be dirty. It sounds really weird when you say it out loud. Dirt set dirty. And we will simply add this inside of it. And then we will also make our contact menu appear. So, contact menu. And just call it rename to name. Save that. Go back into Unity. And we can now jump over here. And let's just edit um, water. We can go up and click rename to rain. And as you can see now, they are all added. Uh, we can now rename them. Uh, let's see, Earth, I think. Let's just make the four elements, just to show we can. And air. Here we go. And they are all inside here. Alright. So, what if you actually want to delete them? Because right now you said it can't delete them. So we need to make a, a way to delete them again. So let's just jump in here. And again, that is a Unity editor. So we actually want this one here. So let's just call it delete this. And I don't know what, let's just call this one here, delete this as well. And delete this one here. And here we actually need to go into our uh, into our uh, container, because we need to remove it from the container as well. So what did I actually call it in here? I called it damage types. So we're going to call damage types dot remove and we're gonna go this. Afterwards, we will go uh, on do dot destroy asset immediately, and say this. Where we have to go as a database that save asset. So we will destroy it, and then we will save the f the fact that we have deleted it. All right. So let's go back into Unity and try and let's actually make a new one just because we have our beautiful four elements. Let's just make two and we can go delete this and we can even rename it and then delete it. And as you can see here, they are still in here. Alrighty. So what if you just want to delete all of them? Well, let's just quickly make a method for that as well. So if we go into our damage container and just get all of this, uh, empty this one out and rename it to delete all. Let's just also call this delete all. Alright, so in here we need to make of each loop that actually goes the opposite way. Because when you are removing from the, for each loop, it will, um, you need to go the other way. Because if you have 10 and you start from the bottom going 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, um, and removing along the way, well, you will get a giant error. So we just need to change this a little. So. Uh, I is actually equals dot count. So this is what we start on. And we actually want to just go I minus minus. Oh, why did we go all the way over there? I minus minus. And when the minus is bigger than zero. Oh, I forgot to 
then we uh, finished counting. Okie dokie. So let's see. So we need to go damage type and just call it TMP equals underscore damage container. Oh, uh, we want the I inside of it. And here we're gonna go damage container dot remove. And the reason why we are um, instantiating, well, we are adding a reference here first is because we actually want to remove it from the list before we delete it. Because when it is deleted, the, well, the reference really doesn't exist anymore. Sometimes um, you can, you don't need to do this. Sometimes it will, it will still remove it and not get an error. But um, for some reason, it's like 50-50 in my experience. So I have, I just did this and I hadn't had an error since. So I don't know if it was supposed to do it or sometimes I'm just lucky. And then afterwards, we simply save the asset. And we save. And we go back out. And we should now be able to delete it all. And here we go. So now you know how to make scriptable objects nested prefabs. Uh, not nested scriptable objects. I hope uh, this video found you well. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe and all that stuff. So thank you for watching.